What's up, everybody? I hold shift here, and this was rage worthy for the second day of EU gameplay, week number four. We had the mix and match between what would be three of the top teams in EU. Started the day off with Navi taking on Fnatic, our traditional number one versus number two. But I say that with such connotation because Fnatic does not look good at all. Navi would absolutely decimate Fnatic in three straight games. 4-1, 4-1, 4-2 were the scores on that one. Um, not in that order. It was a 4-1, 4-2, 4-1. Really, really easy set. Fnatic even flexing onto triple front line for two of the three games. What the? Oh, God. Is it interesting to see how varied these compositions are getting when Bomb King's not allowed to be played. Drogos is banned away in the first two games, and Navi comes out and runs Barrack, Ruckus, and Ash in three games. With a Ying support and a Leon damage, Fnatic had no response for it absolutely whatsoever. They would then take the third game in more traditional fashion using a Drogos with an Ash and Ruckus, but adding a Zin to the pick. It's actually interesting. We saw Zin show up a little bit more in this uh, week, in this day at least, than we had previously, seeing him being played once and even banned once in the second set. But regardless, here's the thing about it. Fnatic do not look good at all whatsoever bugsy on main tank just does not is not exciting i am not even close to being aroused in any way by bugsy's gameplay on an r because it's a boring character he's the best the best paladins player probably ever okay don't talk to me about stolzy in 2018 bugsy is probably the best paladins player that we've seen and he's playing anara does not compute does not compute. I don't I don't understand it whatsoever. Unbelievable. Now, here's the thing about it. Bomb King's still not playable, which we'll talk about more later, but maybe there's a chance to get Bugsy off of that frontliner and unbelievable to play that kind of off-tank solo front that Thiel was doing, but I just don't see him doing it any better than Thiel was. I don't really understand the switch up here. There ha I, I want to know the juicy deets of why this switch happened, because... I, for uh, what I'm looking at, I don't understand it, to be honest with you. The second set of the day, let's put that one behind us. The second set would feature Ninjas in Pajamas versus Virtus Pro. And with the loss from Fnatic, Ninjas in Pajamas now had a chance to lock in the second seed in Europe. And they would do so very easily against Virtus Pro with two four ones finished off with a 4-0 on Serpent Beach. NIP looked great. They're playing a little bit of everything. They still play the Talus, which is interesting because not a lot of people are playing the Talus, especially in Europe. Well, actually only in Europe is it really being played. Talus is seven and eight overall, but NIP is five and three on Talus. Now six and three on Talus, while Mouse Sports is the other team who's played Talus and he's 0 and five. So that's interesting. But regardless, the fact of the matter is Ninja the Pajamas are looking really, really solid. They've put together a solid roster that really fits well with this patch. They're able to run the double front line kind of in both the off tanks situation, which isn't the best look ever, but they make it work okay against teams like Virtus Pro. And then with Diggy Dog being added into the roster and really starting to find a synergy, they really do look like the complete team. They're absolutely the number two team in Europe. I'm excited to see the final showdown between NIP and Navi. It should be fun. But here's the thing. And I have to, I can't let us go. I got hockey to watch. It's 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 the opening day for Blackhawks. Not in Chicago, but they're playing Ottawa. No big deal. But here's the thing. With Bomb King not being played over the last four weeks, they only played in week number one. We gotta include the bye week in that time span. What good is this split really showed us when it comes to the accurate representation of what's gonna be played at qualifiers? Because in my opinion, it's been zero. The fact that Fnatic has had to play double frontline because Bomb King's not available. Just kind of goes to show that this split has been almost a waste of time for a couple of different reasons. Number one being the fact that Bomb King has been playable. He is a major influential champion. Overall, Bomb King in total is sitting at 9 and 10. But in Europe, Europe specifically, he's 7 and 4. He's been the backbone of Fnatic for so long. If you go back to Tuesday and watch the last set where they played Jaguar Falls and Fish was on Pip, it almost felt like he was saying... I really just want to play Bomb King, but there is no Bomb King, so I'll play Pip instead. That's really kind of what it felt like. It didn't really feel like Pip on that map against that comp was like, oh yeah, this makes sense. It's like, no, I would rather have seen a Bomb King there. The fact that Bomb King hasn't been playable because he's been bugged 
is got to be really frustrating for teams like Fnatic. And has it cost them something more influential than just not being able to play him? Well, yeah. If they don't go as a guaranteed HRX spot, that means that they're going to have to play this Bomb King live on Qualifier's land and hope it works out. There are so many things that are really just kind of throwing this whole split aloof that it's hard to really use this as a way to statistically, analytically break down these teams because it hasn't been the best representation because of a major champion not being able to be played. Feels bad. And for Fnatic, I understand the struggles. It's They were sitting at playing the Bomb King. Fnatic was only one and one. But the fact is, they only I think they only played one set in week number one. Yeah, they only played... Oh, well, they played two. But regardless, you've heard enough about that. Make these champions playable, please. It's it's so big. It's going to make everything completely out of whack when we get to the qualifiers. I would like to sit there and still say that NIP is the definitive second best team. But I only say that now because Deal's not playing and Unbelievable is. The way it goes. Lazy, on the other hand, I'm glad the triple tank worked out for you, my dude. I know that that was kind of a heartbreaker from a certain somebody from a certain split long ago. <laughs> Some people just don't put in the work. That's all I got. I've been shipped. That's been Rage Worthy. Let's go watch a puck drop. Catch you guys tomorrow for NA. Bye-bye.